All right. Yes, sir. Breakdown. Here's McNeil uh, on the left here. What we're seeing, this is the same, the same swing. Um, it's just a graphic on the right. And that graphic is, is done by Hawkeye and the MLB stadium. So it's a really cool view that we'll dissect here in a second, but let's start. We're going to start on the left and we're going to look at his timing. So again, notice as the pitcher brings his arm up, look at McNeil bringing his foot up, right? So it all starts with, you know, being on time, making sure that we're getting going, we're getting our, um, you know, our weight distributed into our rear leg early, making sure, notice how, notice where his hands are, okay? I have so many players in the online academy as well. I hope you're watching this, you know who I'm talking to, okay? And they hide their hands, okay? So many players hide their hands. You can see he loads them back, but see how we can still see the knob of the bat at swing launch, okay? I have so many players that get their hands and the bat like this behind their chest, Okay, and when that happens, we get trapped and then our body posture has to change. Okay, so this is a really good for those of you that trap your hands. This is a great way to start. Start with your hands out over the plate. Okay, and then as you load them and you coil your body, notice how his body's coiling as his hands go back, his front shoulders working down and in. Okay, it'll load everything properly and then you won't get trapped. Okay, so we're gonna, now we're going to look at launch position. Here's heel plant. Notice his foot angle. We talked about this when we did the um, – he's only the greatest shortstop ever. The Jeter, um, <laughs> the Jeter breakdown a couple weeks ago. Notice how he's closed off a little bit. Okay, so he's a guy that closes his stance back off, so his heel line is now facing to the opposite field. Okay, this is really good for some players. Some players it's not. Most – it's good. He starts with an open stance, and he brings it back to closed, okay? This will keep him from spinning off the pitches, okay? So his launch position looks great. As he goes through, notice how that knob comes back and faces the pitcher in this position, okay? So knob faces the pitcher. Now he's going to release the barrel, but when his barrel comes out from his hand, so again, I'm looking right where these arrows are in his approach position, Notice how the barrel comes in above the ball slightly. So even though this is a home run, his barrel is approaching the ball from above for most of this swing. Okay, now we're going to get wild. Okay, so I want you to look at the graphic on the right. Okay, this is, this is the same swing. This is a home run. He hit 102 miles an hour, right? We don't have to hit it 115. Okay, and I, I don't know if you can see it, but right here it says, Attack angle of 12. He's only swinging up at 12 degrees, but his launch angle was 27 degrees. Okay, so that's a difference of 15. He wasn't swinging up 27 degrees to hit it 27 degrees. He hit the bottom half of the ball. Okay, now I want you to look because they, they gave us the pitch plane coming in here. I believe it was a 94 mile an hour fastball if we look at the, the video on the left. But this purple line is the pitch coming in, and this blue line is his barrel. Okay, it's his barrel path. Right? It's the middle of his bat, his middle or the middle of that swoosh in there. But that barrel, notice, notice how it gets right below. It gets to the purple line here deep, but then it gets just like an inch below as he's coming through contact. Okay, Players that get four inches below are players that foul pitches straight back, players that swing under pitches, players that strike out once every three times at bat. That's where the hole in the swing is, okay? But to hit home runs, you don't have to drop your barrel super deep under the pitch plane here, okay? All you got to do – now, if he got to that point, if he wasn't an inch under that blue line, okay? So if he wasn't an inch, he would have squared this up and hit a line drive over the second baseman's head at, at probably 12 to 14 degrees, okay, which is what the pitch was coming in. That's the big thing that – that we want to learn from this is he is a flat swinger, right? He doesn't have a big drop under that purple line and then come up through it. So he's going to make a lot more solid contact. That is the graphic of somebody. And we put it in there all the time, right? Like Vlad has, you know, very similar path as that. That's a guy that's going to hit for a higher average. Okay. It's not about, Oh, we're just trying to hit home runs on everything. You don't have to, you can try to have a flat swing like this, and just stay slightly under the pitch to get it in the air, okay? Now, if you're 85 pounds, probably not a good idea. Try to hit the ball. Try to launch the ball at 20 degrees. 
you know, because they're going to catch it if it goes any higher than that. But as we get older and as we get stronger, then we can start to hit the ball in the air more. Okay, back to hit the actual swing, assuming you all are still awake. All right, so now we're looking at his vertical bat angle at contact. Now, number one, where is this pitch? This pitch is thigh high right down the middle of the plate, okay? What do we hit? But what balls do we hit really well? Mistakes. You have to take advantage of mistakes. We talked about that probably in our first episode way back in 1987. Okay, we talked about not not missing the Paul Molitor story, not missing mistakes, hitting mistakes hard. Okay, what's good about him is he could get his bat, his hands in the same spot and get his bat vertical angle flatter at let's say 10 degrees and hit a pitch at his belly button. Okay, he can also drop it a little bit more without moving his hands very much and get it down here a little bit more to cover a pitch at the bottom of the thighs. Okay, so he's very flexible with his with his swing okay he doesn't just practice one move he doesn't just practice one turn or one move or one swing plane or whatever it is okay so um anyway really good swing. we're going to see it from the side here and it's kind of a weird angle from the side but notice how he clears his his right hip now he's a right-handed thrower so this is a tougher move so typically right-handed throwers that are left-handed hitters, they don't get nearly as much separation with their front hip. Like if you look at his front hip turning, his shoulder, his front shoulder is coming at the same time, okay? He doesn't have a ton of separation. He's coiled, and then when his foot hits the ground, he's got a little separation, but not nearly as much as, you know, somebody that is, uh, you know, left-hand dominant. And that's probably why he doesn't hit the ball quite as hard as other people, but he doesn't care. What did he say? If I hit the ball 30 miles an hour, but it's a base hit, I'm the man, right? He feels good about that. Okay, so now we're going to fast forward a little bit to this. It's kind of a front side view, so it's not the uh, most beautiful thing, okay? Uh, beautiful view, but just watch his footwork. You see how closed his front hip is when he lands. So now you can see that move. His front knee stays closed. His front foot stays closed. His back knee starting to come in to release his hips, Okay. And then as he rolls through, it's just a very sandlot type swing. He has great extension. He's kind of upright. He looks a little bit like a golfer with his lower body, okay, with his, his front foot rolling over. So why does his front foot roll over? Because it was closed, okay? We talked about that with Barry Bonds, okay? If your front foot is closed and you're trying to rotate your hips, your foot's going to give, okay? The foot's going to give, and you're going to kind of roll to the outside of your foot. But notice his consistent extension here, okay? Like, he gets to the ball, and then he extends through, and that barrel, if you look at his power V here, again, it's kind of a wonky ankle angle, the, the Mets. You, like the ball. I do like it. All right, Jim. This is the last podcast listeners will ever do. Did you just disagree with me, Jim? <laughs> okay. Um, anyway. Oh, you are. I didn't even do anything. Okay. So, again, we're extending the arms through. The power V is very, very um, in line with his – his bat is in line with his V, right? So, here's the V of his arms, and then that bat's kind of shooting right out the middle of that. Okay? That's what we want to look for. And if we look at the right, I don't know if it continues. Yeah, it doesn't really – well, yeah, you can see his bat go through. That's the same part of the swing there. Notice where his – his the top bat is on the right hand side okay it's probably right about there so the cool part is you can see how smooth this blue line is on the right that blue line is his barrel path so he could hit a ball i'm going to mark this up i'm going to try to zoom in a little bit more because i can all right so i'm going to zoom in a little bit more so this area here where his barrel path is on that purple line I mean, even here it's on, right? So he's on plane. He can really hit a ball anywhere from there to there. Now, if he hits it back here, he's probably going to just shoot that foul into the dugout, okay? But this this front of the box here, that's, that's going to be his happy zone, all right? So because that contact zone is so big, he's going to make more solid contact. Now we're going to look at this from above, okay? We're going to take an above view. This is how his barrel worked. Would you say this is inside the ball? Okay. It's inside the ball here. If you look at his barrel coming from the inside, see how it matches the angle of the plate? This is pretty cool. 
Okay, so here's where it matches. See the pitch losing speed, by the way? This is really cool. This is what people don't realize. This was, again, if we look here, I'm going to go back. Oh, do I have it? Oh, I may have to zoom out here. Oh, it's not telling us. This was a 94 mile an hour pitch. I'm fairly certain of that when I saw it on the original video. Okay. But if you look at this pitch by the time it gets to home plate, you can see the video starts out. Oh, that's where it caps out. So if we look at this, you know, by the time it gets here, it's, it's 88, but it started at 94. People, people don't really realize that. So the gun takes consideration of the hand, like how fast is, what is the fastest part of the pitch? So even though it's 94 there, it's losing eight miles an hour by the time it comes to the plate. Okay. So there's something you may or may not have known. Okay. But if you look at his barrel path, it's coming from the inside and then he's releasing the barrel and still able to pull the ball. But this is a pitch that was, I guess it, it shows it maybe one ball. It's like ball five, I would say, but because he stayed on plane, maybe he was a little early. Maybe he wanted to hit it here. I mean, I don't think he did, but you know, he could have still hit that pitch there right? That's the key. So a lot of times if somebody's hitting around the ball, what you're going to see instead of the blue line coming from the inside, the blue line's going to kind of come out this way, and then it's going to come back around this way. So we're, we, our barrel comes from the outside a little more. It always starts in here, okay? But what happens is it, rele it gets released with the hand. So if we look at that, we're going to just geek out here. This is like a certification breakdown, so... Some people may love this and some won't. So as he comes through here, okay, as, as he comes through here, and again, it's not the best view even though Jim likes it, we can see his his front forearm is here and as bad as here. So this angle in here is less than 90, okay? People that hit around the ball, which pretty much every big leaguer does not, okay? When they say, I'm trying to stay inside the ball, of course you do. That's why you're in the big leagues, like. If you didn't hit inside, if you didn't stay inside the ball, you wouldn't have got out of high school. Okay, but if he, if this barrel starts working out this way and this angle in here gets bigger during this part of the stage, then we're in trouble. So you can see that when does the barrel come out from his body? Maybe there. Players that um, hit around the ball instead of this position, it'll start to come out when they first start to turn, and then that barrel will be on an angle like that. Okay, so that's kind of what, you know, inside or outside, that's when it happens. It happens during rotation. Do they hold that angle with their forearm and their bat, or do they start to release it early? Hence, that's why I'm not a huge fan of um, throwing the barrel away from you early in the swing to get on plane early, because that will, if you try to hit a ball out in front or if you're a little early, you really don't have a chance to hit it. Um, so try to keep that. That would be considered a cast if that barrel moves away from the head. So anyway, recapping McNeil, he's a hitter. He looks different on almost every pitch. He is not a robot. He is not a just turn and burn guy. He swings down on high pitches. Sometimes he swings up on high pitches, depending on the situation and depending on if he's trying to drive in runs or he's trying to get on base. And to me, that's a complete hitter. And as we teach hitters, we want to teach them to do different things. Hey, hit a ground ball here. Hey, hit a fly ball here. Hey, pull this ball. Hey, hit this one the other way. If you can create complete hitters like that and you train their muscle memory and their brain to react to different pitches in different situations then in games when you got 0.4 seconds to react or less than that actually 0.226 seconds 0.24 seconds something like that then it will their body will know what to do because you put them through those different scenarios that's all i got jim